The Wild World of Batwoman is a 1966 American science fiction superhero film produced, written, directed and edited by Jerry Warren. The film stars Catherine Victor as Batwoman, George Andre as Professor G. Octavius Neon, and Steve Brody as Jim Flanagan. With the popularity of the Batman television series, director Jerry Warren decided to make his own superhero Bat film. After being sued for copyright infringement, Warren re-released the film under the title She Was a Hippie Vampire. Topic. Plot Batwoman employs the services of several young female agents known as Batgirls in her pursuit of justice. Her archenemy is a masked villain named Rat Fink. Added to the mix as the president and vice president of the Ajax Development Corporation. The company, using plutonium as its fuel source, has created a powerful listening device called the Atomic Hearing Aid, which allows for limitless eavesdropping. The company tried to sell the device to the U.S. government, but the government wasn't interested due to its unstable power supply. Instead, they ordered the company to destroy the device. The president of Ajax refused to destroy it, and Rat Fink is pressuring the company to give him the device. The vice president of Ajax recruits Batwoman to protect the device, but Rat Fink's minions use drugged bowls of soup to incapacitate Batwoman and her allies and steal the device. The two storm the lair and retrieve it, unmasking Rat Fink and converting one of his minions, Tiger, to the side of justice after he falls in love with one of the Batgirls. Topic. Cast Catherine Victor as Batwoman George Andre as Professor G. Octavius Neon Steve Brody as Jim Flanagan Richard Banks as Rat Fink Steve Conte as Bruno Mel Oceans as Tiger Bruno Vesoda as Seltzer Bob Arbogast as Spirits in Seance Voice Lloyd Nelson as Heathcliff Topic Production The original idea for the film began with Jerry Warren realizing there was large popularity with the comic book superhero Batman. Warren decided to make his own bat like superhero character into a film. Warren offered the leading role to Catherine Victor. Having worked on Warren's previous productions such as Teenage Zombies and Curse of the Stone Hand, Victor was originally not very excited about working with Warren again. To convince her, Warren promised Victor large production values, color photography and her own bat boat in the film. None of these promises ever came to fruition. On receiving the script for the role of Seltzer, Bruno Vesoda recalled that Once again I was in for it. It would be like memorizing a telephone book with pages picked at random. Catherine Victor claimed that on set if an actor rubbed Warren the wrong way, their lines would be cut out or given to other actors. Victor claimed the pretty brunette who was kidnapped in the beginning of the picture was supposed to be the lead girl, but for some reason Jerry thought she was getting too big for her britches and gave all her lines to the girl in the leopard tights. For the monsters in the film, Warren used footage from the Universal Pictures film The Mole People. Several other scenes throughout the film are also taken from different films, one of which seems to have been from a Swedish film, judging by a background sign reading, Livsumdel, a Swedish word used for grocery stores. <laughs> 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 
Topic Release Due to the similar title, the production company Associated Distributors Productions was promptly sued for copyright infringement. Warren won this lawsuit. After the lawsuit and as the popularity of the television series Batman died down, Warren re-released the film under the title She Was a Hippie Vampire. In 1993, The Wild World of Batwoman was released as episode number 515 of Mystery Science Theater 3000 where it was featured with the short cheating. This episode was released later on DVD by Rhino Entertainment. Topic. Reception Modern reception of the film has been very negative. Fred Belden of the film database Allmovie gave the film one and a half stars out of five, noting the film as a rip-off hack job no matter how you slice it, though its innocent veneer, period charm, and forced wackiness might endear the film to fans of similar goofs like Rat Fink a Boo Boo or The Nasty Rabbit. Film director Fred Allen Ray noted the film has all the earmarks of Warren's worst work, but rises above the level of something as tedious as Petrified World. It is funny in an unintentional way and sometimes is not hard to look at. Topic. See also List of American films of 1966